not uh, from your immediate I don't know, contact zone. Okay. Um, all right. So. Uh, all right. Uh, so ethnography, basically, most of you are correct. Yes, ethnography means in general, the classic definition is understanding people in the natural set, uh, setting and uh, from ideally from their point of view, uh, that's the inside uh, perspective and also from the point of view of you as an outsider. But uh, in ethnography, it need not encompass a human entity. It is not necessary that we have to be only focusing on people, though it does mean in classic sense, we are looking at a group of people, but it also includes all elements, the non-human elements that are related to the culture or the society or the target group that you're focusing on. So uh, that is the basic definition of ethnography and that is more, this sort of definition is more relevant probably in a business sense because when you, we are out in the field to do a research about a product or a service, we need, we have to focus on what sort of population, the consumer group or the user group or our target participants that we are focusing on and also to understand uh, their interaction with the particular product that we have and uh, their interaction with the uh, other members in the family or the group, and perhaps if needed, the interaction of other members with the product. So all these points will eventually encompass the ethnographic research that we have to do uh, with, uh, for a product or a service. Now, when we add the word visual in front of visual ethnography, it simply means that our prime focus in ethnographic research or our maybe our additional focus depending on the your research question becomes that we would be targeting we would be focusing on all the visual elements that are related to our research based related to our research question or uh, also this is one definition alternatively it also means using audio visual tools in research to document either the research entirely if needed or in parts according to your research question, which means things that are essential for you or suitable or like a good to have thing. Uh, is my uh, accent okay? Do you want me to speak slowly or am I like okay in terms of my speed? Okay, I okay, get it okay. All right. Uh, it's okay. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you can see over here, these are three pictures and these are different different settings and uh, these are different ways it it sort of if uh, if i ask you if you look at these pictures what sort of things come to your mind i just yeah what sort of things come to your mind if you look at any of the pictures it can be anything random you may or may not know about the culture you may or may not know about the space can anyone answer this so yeah, on the left hand side, you see it's a dental shop and uh, in the middle, you see this uh, shop for, you know, chart and, you know, eating all these, um, what do you call, savouries, you know, fried stuff. Hmm. It's an e-table, basically it's a shop of e-tables, chart kind of a, you know, dukan. And uh, on the right side, you see a shop again, where there is uh, kind of mixed food items probably what I can see on my screen is like a little bit of uh, rice and also a few things. Again, the chart uh, materials only, but they are like more uh, kept very nicely. Well, you know, a stacked or let's say neatly kept because again, the, uh, the shop, which is okay. in the middle is like a roadside or let's say on the road, you know, on the main road kind of a shop, but this setting on the right, seems to be something which is inside a shop. So it is, let's say it is more, a little bit more professionally kept and, you know, segregated and kept that way. All right. Uh, anyone else, uh, just by saying you don't have, maybe not the, uh, the, uh, the description of what the pictures say, maybe what emotions it, uh, or uh, what comes to your mind when you look at these pictures, that what sort of setting this might be and anything, any random thing that comes to your mind. I think it feels old school and traditional. Uh, all of them or like one of them? Uh, most of them, I think. Okay, yes, that's one. That's a correct thing. Anything else uh, um, anyone would want to add on to this? 
Um, it just kind of um, uh, made me think of how humans and objects interact and how we shape them and how they shape us as well. Absolutely, yes, it is an, a form of interaction. Anyone else would want to add something different, uh, anything that is coming to your mind? Rachel, Danny, anything that comes pops up? Maybe the one on the right is like a tourist location because it looks like she's a backpacker. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So yes, this, these are all old school pictures because uh, the, for example, the center picture is of, uh, chart is basically Indian snacks. So this shop is, uh, I mean, if I'm correct, so it's probably 70 odd years old. So again, this is very old school. And uh, the reason of taking this shot in this or taking this image in this way is to not just focus on the name of the shop, which is as they is written a pride of the place it belongs to, but also focus on one of the two of the oldest members of this shop. So again, how these people are interacting and uh, how this particular place has a very special uh, importance in the lives of the locals of uh, the city of Agra. And yes, uh, again, uh, it is also the way people are interacting. For example, if you see this one, it is a local dentist and uh, it is a certain section of people who are visiting, who visit such places, who visit a local dentist. Uh, uh, because there are different reasons. So if you can see these people, if you see this shop, perhaps we can get an idea that most of the people who visit or even the so-called dentist over here belongs to a socioeconomic uh, class. And finally, the third picture on the extreme right. Yes, uh, she was a part tourist, a part researcher. So uh, yes, Rachel, you're correct that uh, she is a tourist and she, that's why she has a backpack. And uh, this shop also is one of the oldest shop for spices and nuts and uh, different things in old Delhi. Uh, so if you see when you the importance of visuals here is they give you a totality they give you an entire picture a comprehensive picture of how people interact with the elements people interact with the space right uh, moving on to so the uh, actual definitions or what exactly is visual ethnography so visual ethnography or why we should be using it. So uh, if I would have just told you that, uh, just described you these pictures in words, uh, probably you would have formed your own images, you would have formed your own thoughts. But then by showing you, I am giving you an opportunity to be more reflective. So visual ethnography becomes a reflexive science. So because what happens is when we go out in the field or before we go out in the field, when we do a desk research or secondary research, we are always have our own cognitive biases. We have our own cognitive thinking. Even when we do literature review, uh, we uh, form or we understand literature review from our own perspectives. Uh, cognitive bias is always a big challenge in research. But if you have visual tools or visual aids and you go out in the field, you have an up, yeah, you have an option of recording, you have an option of uh, recording uh, maybe the entire research or part of the research and use it later on to reflect on what you thought was right or what you were looking for. So it helps you remove any sort of biases that may sometimes hinder the growth of your product or whatever your answers that you're looking for. Say for example, a kitchen apron. If Let's say I am a company that wants to make kitchen aprons so that are anti-inflammable. So I'm not sure if that will ever happen or not, but let's assume that. But uh, I would go to a person's household or my target uh, user or maybe I have a bunch of users and maybe I'll assume that it will be the women and I have a mixed group. I have uh, different genders. I have different uh, age groups, not children, uh, obviously, but uh, maybe children. So I would assume that maybe the women would be using the cage kitchen apron most. And But I in turn get to know, no, it's not the women. It's the men. It's the children. It's uh, anyone other than the women who are using the kitchen apron. So, which, uh, which means that what I thought was different, what I assumed was different, and uh, it, it comes from my cognitive bias, it comes from what I have known, but when I went there, when I saw there, or the things that I captured, 
it told me that no, a kitchen apron need not be used by a certain gender or a certain age. And uh, other than that, uh, visual ethnography it does not include just human entity. It can also include social and cultural relevance things also like a television and a music system. You need not be, uh, you need not have a person watching a television or listening to music to under understand uh, the, uh, the kind of television or the kind of music system or their background, socioeconomic, social cultural background. It, uh, even if you can see where the television or a music system is placed. For example, the youth will probably have a music system in their own rooms, listening to blaring music. If you are a married couple and maybe of certain age, you might have a music system in your living area for people to welcome when you have parties. So it would just like let us know as to where each, how each person sees a particular product and what is the relation and how much of each product is used by that person. We are, also, we are just seeing this. The reason we can see all this, that is why it helps us to know uh, better. And yes, it helps to evoke the emotive and cognitive responses uh, by, um, uh, uh, by seeing the product and uh, not just the information that is integrated in individual and cultural value systems. So we're not just seeing a particular item, a particular product. We also see when people interact with it, what is the emotional relationship? What is the cognitive relationship with that product? And uh, it, uh, it also helps us to know what is not just the spontaneous bits, but also the planned bit. Probably one of a, a good example here can be people traveling by metro um, or say Euro rail or, uh, or a local transport. There will be a lot of people who would be traveling on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you would have to just do an ethnographic study on people traveling by metro, um, you we go there with your tools, visual, your camera and everything. You will see all sorts of people. You will see people traveling by in uniform, people, office goers, and there will be people who will be maybe traveling for the first time. So, um, so when you have a camera and when you decide to record it or take pictures of this space, like say a metro, you can actually uh, record not just a certain section of people. For example, you decided to just focus on office goers. So you will not just get the pictures or photographs of office goers. You can actually get to know about other people who travel and do these office goers, the people who are going to office, do they uh, also interact with the other set of people or not? And what sort of interaction it is and what are the other people doing? So there's a diversity of data that we can collect through a uh, visual medium. So some of the visual examples of visual medium or uh, can be photos, uh, videos, dance, drama, artifacts, all these are memes, infographics. Nowadays we have uh, these Zoom, teleports, my reports, uh, which are more business oriented uh, things. So we have all these options and uh, so basically visual ethnography helps us to understand diverse perspectives and even the aesthetics and sensibilities that uh, different humans, uh, we, as, we as humans possess. It is eventually an imprint in simple terms. It is a medium of memory. So uh, the entire team in a business research or UX research or market research, uh, entire team would not be going out in the field ideally to do conduct the research. So if you are the single person going out in the field to do an ethnographic study, you can use the audiovisual medium, you can use your camera phone or whichever mobile or digital, however you have it, and turn your in data, turn the insights, turn whatever you can see over there for your research into like a memory, a souvenir, a postcard, which later if presented with your group, helps them to introspect better, reflect better, understand things better in a more comprehensive way. Uh, any concerns guys in terms of accent, in, in terms of my speed? No, it's good. Okay. All right, so another question guys, uh, if, if uh, you can see the slide. Uh, I have a statement here which says a curved line with every point equidistance from the center. Now assume that you had only this statement in front of you right now or you're in an examination wherein you had to define what do you call the curved line with 
every point equidistant from the center. How much time do you think it would take you to write the answer or to tell me the answer? Can someone answer this? Five seconds, maybe. Okay, uh, who, who is that? Okay, so five seconds, right. So anyone else? Uh, so um, I got five seconds as one answer. Anyone else? Would you take longer? Or would you take less? You could not see that this is a circle. I mean, you just can read the lines. Would anyone take longer than five seconds or maybe less than five seconds? Yeah, I would probably take two to three minutes. And uh, who would that be? Um, Mustafa. Okay, all right, guys. Yeah, so, all right. So, uh, so person who said five seconds over here, um, may I know the reason that you said five seconds? Is, is geometry your strong uh, uh, subject or maybe <laughs> so, yeah. Or uh, is, is it because, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, can you let us know that what made you, because five seconds is a fairly good time. To answer it, I'm just taking the cues from the curve line and the equidistant. Okay, okay, great. Uh, so, which means that, uh, so yeah, five seconds is a good time, but if I would have just shown you the circle, it would have been easy for even, say, Mustafa, or maybe even easier for, uh, I think that was Harris who mentioned about uh, five seconds uh, to let me know that this is a circle. And, uh, but if I just have, so that's the power of visuals. So when you see a visual, it uh, triggers your visual memory. It triggers your, uh, all the data that you have in your mind faster than uh, probably a text would do. But this is also a visual, but uh, this uh, would have you thinking more and this will have a more spontaneous response, so the, the circle image. And, um, so, uh, so and, and the good part is in, uh, when we talk about sense of sight, sense of sight is one of the strongest sights or it is the primary sight in most of us. So that is why when you see something, that is why we have a lot of things that trigger in our mind by seeing that image or that, uh, that uh, picture. Now, if you see the below images, uh, again, a quick exercise. So um, there's going to be some lot of exercises in this uh, webinar to make it interesting, guys. Uh, so don't mind me asking you, keep on asking you questions over here. Um, so if you see these three images here, uh, what do you, uh, what can you um, tell me about it? So any, pick any one image. What can you tell me about any of these three images? There's a marketplace. Sorry. In the distance, with yeah. like different colored flowers. Looks like tulips and some, I don't know, chrysanthemums. Okay. All right. Uh, anyone else would want to take a good uh, attempt to talk about any other image? Anything that comes to your mind. It is your mind. You would think differently. Uh, you would have different kind of cognitive thinking, seeing the visuals. I will have a different kind of cognitive thinking if I would have seen these visuals for the first time. So anyone? Yeah. Okay, the, the, the picture in the right, at the right side, extreme right. Mm -hmm. I the picture, we can see uh, some people are protesting, probably in a developed country. Okay. Developed countries. Uh, and people are protesting in a peaceful way. They are not going to be violent. And some people are, this is a blurry, blurry picture, but still, uh, I can assume that although the people were educated mm -hmm. and they were uh, calm mm -hmm. and they were peaceful while they are demonstrating their mm -hmm. uh, some demands or anything. Okay. What about the first image? Uh, anyone would want to take a try for the first image? What do you think so it is? So my first impression about the image was probably, you know, uh, this person is really hungry and uh, has to probably cut down on his uh, meal budget and, you know, he has to, or then, you know, let's say he doesn't have cash. So through his mobile, probably he will have to 
you know, go for some kind of a credit facility or something. But basically, the main feeling that this picture gives me is that this person is not able to buy or uh, have a particular thing because it is beyond his reach, financial reach. This is mm -hmm. the very strong feeling that I got from the first picture. Right. And uh, so adding one more question, if you saw these three pictures, uh, not together, one by one, that let's assume they are different personalities or pictures taken by three different people. What kind of a product or uh, maybe a service or anything that would you want to introduce to these three? Let's say this is person X, Y, Z. What sort of a product do you think can you introduce in this space or if they were like uh, people? Aris, Danny, anyone would want to? I think the first one can be like a, a loan, maybe. A loan, like a bank loan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, any other? Uh, anyone else about second or third image? Oh, uh, second image. You can sell uh, probably something like a marriage or a creative kind related kind of a thing. Okay. Sell a marriage, maybe like an astrologer, something like that. Not astrologer, but a marriage, something to do with the birthdays, a festive okay. event, a good event, okay. like, you know. Okay, okay. Maybe a shop which has all the items that uh, are used yeah. in, a, in a marriage. Okay. What about mm -hmm. the third image? Can someone uh, take a wild guess or just anything that pops in your mind? What would One you that say? has the resist thingy. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, let's just say the cover of a magazine. I don't know. A cover of a magazine. And what sort of magazine would you be selling? Um, <laughs> Would be um, okay, not necessarily a magazine, but more more of a kind of like a revolutionary. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. A pop music album or something. Uh, Rachel, can you please repeat that? Maybe like a music album, like punk rock or something okay. alternative. Okay. Uh, that would be to the third uh, person or third space. I think it's uh, like a product of photography journalistic, maybe. I don't okay. Know. Okay. And uh, anyone else would want to say something? What can you sell to any of these three people or three spaces? So for the first uh, space, you could also um, kind of uh, bank loan or something for the first space. Yeah. 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 That's already answered. Okay, guys. So when you saw these images, uh, you had your own assumptions. You had your own thoughts as to what uh, they uh, they became. These images became extensions of personalities of our assumed personalities. So to this first person, since it's a mobile phone and it clearly says, "My jobless self can't wait to dig into this juicy burger." Maybe this person is lost a job or maybe going through some tough times. So yes, you can sell them a loan. Maybe, and maybe you can also, uh, it's also a mockery at the uh, social system that uh, how people are going hungry because hunger is a very important problem in the world. And uh, simultaneously for the second image, yes, you can sell, uh, this is an image of this place as a religious place. So, uh, and yes, it's a marketplace also. So simultaneously you can sell uh, marriage related items or different items. Uh, maybe religious items or uh, maybe uh, since it has other shops also you can sell uh, maybe e eateries because a lot of tourists come here or uh, uh, or or anything so and uh, in the final image you see resist but uh, as Arif said that this can be an image of uh, maybe resistance happening in a developed country a peaceful resistance now that's Arif's imagination or his thinking that uh, says that this is an image from a developed country and it is a peaceful image though we're not clear that this is a peaceful image or this is a peaceful protest and uh, yes since it mentions resistance you can sell a music album because music and resistance goes hand in hand you can sell or something journalistic you can sell us or you can introduce something uh, like a magazine cover so uh, when we see visuals, when we see images, they always become uh, extensions of personalities of uh, people they are associated with or, uh, or uh, people who are present in the images or if not present in the images or uh, the culture or the society those images are related to. 
So uh, there's a circular graph, circular uh, diagram over there. So when you see visuals, you get knowledge about that space, that society, and it further makes you think that what is this about? Where does it come? So it basically ans answers the five W's and one H, the what, why, when, where, and how. And then when you start thinking, you go deep down into your memory. Uh, you maybe try to relate it to yourself. You try to relate it to other cultures. There's something known as cultural relativism, which has to be, which has to, I mean, it, it's, it's like uh, almost, one has to be very careful when we talk about uh, cultural relativism with reference to visual ethnography. And it is a good thing uh, in context of business research, but in context of its own definition, cultural relativism is a bad thing. Would anyone would want to tell me what is cultural relativism, not the social scientist? So whoever is from social science background, uh, apart from them, can anyone tell me what you understand by the word cultural relativism? That every culture is relative. Um, every meaning culture. that, that like, um, you can't necessarily judge a culture based on the things that they do because it makes sense in their own world, if that makes sense. Okay, and anyone else other than uh, um, the answer given right now by Mani? Anyone else would want to say except the social scientists? Ratnakar, there's someone called Ratnakar, I can see. Can, would you want to answer this? Danny or Harris, do you want to answer? What would you, what comes to your mind when you think, when I say the word cultural relativism? I think it's that we cannot judge uh, other people's culture from our cultural perspective. Yes, that's the definition, yes. That's one of the definitions. Yes, yeah, so cultural relativism basically means that you, uh, yeah, you uh, in classic definition would be uh, when we see something in a society, in a culture, or when we're observing in a research, we start analyzing things from our own uh, perspective, perspective of the culture that we come from. And uh, that's not a good thing, ideally speaking, but because uh, then we are, uh, we are thinking from our own point of view, our own uh, cognitive perspective, which is uh, coming from our own cultural background or our own individual needs or personality. And it eventually blinds us with what we want to see. So when the, the for, so, that, so it basically becomes a hindrance in our ways of seeing. But then when we think about business research, cultural relativism can actually be a little beneficial for business research, I feel. That's reason being, when you see something, when you see a product being used in a particular culture and you have multiple uh, user groups of different kinds, different societies, and uh, you would want to find common grounds, common uh, similarities and also differences across all the cultures that are there to understand how that product is used in similar fashion or in what are the differences that lie across different cultures. So in that way, cultural relativism becomes beneficial. So that's what, when we have a see a picture and when we start thinking, something comes in our memory by seeing the picture, we have, we, it is always nice to give a thought and uh, focus on uh, the picture or the images or what we see from the perspective of cultural relativism. Because when we are able to do that, then only we'll be able to develop empathy or compassion for the group that is actually, or the person or the people who's at, who are actually in front of us. And it just broadens our horizon or broadens our vision with respect to what are the possibilities of the product or the market that we have in front of us. All good guys, you want me to slow down or anyone needs a break or anything? Okay. Thank you. And uh, okay, so in, as I said earlier, um, an ethnographic research need not have uh, just human elements in the space. So basically it means that how can it be useful? So it helps you to record or document the space and all the possible elements in that space. If you see these two images, this, uh, you can see people, you can see there, maybe it's a picnic, maybe it's some sort of a, 
festival happening or uh, uh, and it is there's a lot of greenery maybe it is summers over here so you can see all different elements in this space and this the image below you can see uh, maybe this image is from somewhere from Southeast Asia and uh, uh, it looks like a fishing community and it is near the sea so you can see different elements all possible elements in both the images respective of what, whatever is being shown in the picture. Uh, that's what uh, the benefit of the users of uh, using visuals in your research is or documenting your research visually and uh, such visuals helps to interact uh, with the audience better because unless and until you want to increase your user base, increase your audience, if you just tell them Okay, here is my product. Okay, for example, you are a tourist, uh, you're a tour tourism company or a you're from hospitality industry. You say, hey, I am uh, selling you this travel package, buy it. But you don't show any images. I don't think anyone is going to actually buy your package unless and until probably you pay them. But if you actually show them that this is what I'm offering you, I'm going to offer you a trip to an experience in this uh, maybe a fishing community or an experience in the music festival or anything. This is what I'm going to offer you. And then people get motivated to look in, at least look into what you're offering. And it helps to remove cognitive dissonance. It helps to compare different attitudes with behavior. And as I said earlier, helps to analyze the differences and similarities. Uh, for example, in the automobile industry, uh, people see different advertisements on TV or maybe YouTube or different uh, resources wherein when they want to buy a car. But when they go and buy, they, they, they might buy something else from the showroom. So uh, if we can record or document them or uh, maybe ask them to do like a diary study, maybe take images, pictures of themselves uh, when buying things, we can compare it with what they saw on YouTube, the advertisement they saw on the YouTube, and what they eventually bought in a, in a better way. Did they like these, the car better in real and instead of what they saw on YouTube or, or uh, was it something else? Then visuals are kind of a collaborator between community product and the audience and it creates homogeneity and relatability evoking emotions and sometimes building new communities. These days, uh, low carb, keto, intermittent fasting. So how many of you, does, or anyone over here is into uh, keto, low carb or intermittent fasting or any kind of uh, health and fitness community? Do you follow something? Is there anyone who is following? Is there anyone who is into any kind of uh, fitness, health and fitness community? And if yes, what made you get into that or start doing whatever is that that you do? Fitness as in, are you only talking about a uh, diet? Because uh, I'm into yoga. So yeah. that is... Right, absolutely. It can be, it, yes, it can be anything. So like if you're into yoga, you started yoga. So what is it that provoked you to get into yoga? Like what motivated you to get into yoga? Uh, basically spiritual and uh, what do you call? Um, yeah, spiritual development and awareness and leading to uh, fitness in the body. Okay, so maybe you must have seen images on social media platforms, you must have seen people, you must have read their experiences, and which is also a way of seeing. So uh, that is why what uh, kind of may motivated you to get into yoga? I saw a few wallpapers though when I was going through a problem and it was a very simple thing that was recommended. I tried and it just worked like a miracle for me you know so that really really pushed me into doing it it was a very simple suggestion you know for a problem but coincidentally i was going through it and i'm like okay fine uh, why not so i read about it more on the media and uh, you know the social platforms mm -hmm. and it seemed a very nice thing to do and when i did it it benefited me immensely so then that's how i got into it okay anyone else would want to uh, answer yeah, yeah. Um, so I, uh, I've been doing uh, jiu-jitsu, I've tried um, 
basically last month I joined a jiu-jitsu club. It's kind of like a martial art. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have joined if I didn't see like the YouTube video that I saw. So it was basically, um, yeah, encouraged me mm. to go for it. Right. Ab absolutely. Um, anyone else would want to answer this? Did anyone join some fitness community or say started doing something for health and fitness? This is just an example. By not seeing any visual. Do we have anyone like that? Yes, Harris, do you want to say something? Oh, no, no. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So, guys, if you uh, just um, uh, both the answers here, you got motivated, like me and got motivated to join, to start yoga because of she saw some wallpapers. And um, I think money got motivated to join Jiu-Jitsu by seeing YouTube videos. So visuals, it is the visuals of different kinds that played a role of a collaborator between the community that already existed, um, the health, the Jiu-Jitsu or the yoga community. And it brought in new people, which is Meenal for yoga and money for uh, uh, Jiu-Jitsu. So visuals become a way of interaction or collaboration between the actors, which is the participants that you see in the advertisement or that you saw on the wallpaper or the YouTube video and between you as the spectator. And uh, uh, so that's this is one of the most one of the most important things or uh, benefits of visuals. And sometimes it forms new communities also uh, out of uh, uh, interaction. Like how now we have this, everyone is using so much of Zoom. Uh, so there's Zoom, there's Google Meet, there's MS uh, MS Teams and different visual interaction on platforms. So they all form form fall under the scope of. Uh, uh, interaction through uh, through uh, through through the through the internet or through uh, this medium, but there are sub communities also. Zoom community is different. Uh, MS Teams is different. Google Meet community is different. So there are new communities also that can form with the help of uh, visuals, and uh, it helps you to record everything that is um, that. that all the different cultural elements and their interconnectedness and the multi-dimensional uh, aspects of uh, things that are present in that scope, in that space, or in that uh, time, or in that culture, or in that uh, society. Um, for example, let's uh, say when we talk about agricultural practices or animal husbandry, uh, there are different uh, ways of doing agricultural practices. Uh, for example, rice is uh, something that is consumed by variety of different different societies and different cultures but all practices all elements all uh, say small nuances associated with planting of rice maybe there are rituals are different across societies and they are all interrelated or interconnected through each other so this is also something that we can uh, capture when we use our visuals and in a better way instead of just focusing on rice growing uh, so that's another benefit and uh, uh, I've written over here in Mathura, which is a place in Uttar Pradesh, a very religious place. The butchery shop is uh, outside the periphery of the city. It is not included in the periphery of the city. Now, if I were to do an ethnographic research on this butchery shop, which is in a place or outside a place, contrary to what the butchery shop stands for, in the periphery of the city, uh, as far as I know, it's uh, almost there is no uh, no selling of meat of any kind, except for five star hotels that might be there. But if I were to do a research on this butchery shop, if I use a visual medium, I am getting a chance, I'm getting an opportunity to not just see or understand the people that come to the butchery shop or the kind of diaspora, kind of uh, people from with social economic background that come, where is it placed, why is it placed there, and how does it interact with other people from the society? Because are there people from within the, within, within the main city that are coming to buy things from this butchery shop? So that's another thing, um, that's another example. And as I mentioned earlier, it helps to understand things or helps in progress in a very retrospective manner. So it's almost like a 360 degree. You have an understanding of a consumer group or a culture with the help of your desk research or your secondary research. You go to an ethnographic observation and so far maybe you are thinking in a certain way, you have only thought about certain points. And then when you start recording it and then you go back and observe things again, 
the visuals that all, all audio visuals that are captured you uh, get to know more in detail as to what you missed or what you uh, what you saw uh, that was different from what you assumed uh, so uh, and it finally helps us to make any required changes in your research methods and methodologies or you can maybe improve your product or process in a certain way uh, for example, let's take an example of a digital device. Uh, if I say, if I ask you, what, what, what kind of, uh, what time or what way do you think uh, a housewife or a security guard would use a mobile phone? If I ask you this question as a researcher, let's say as a business or any kind of researcher, what would, what answers would you give me? What thoughts would come to your mind if I ask you, describe me the use of mobile phones by housewives or say security guards? And they are not your idle, uh, your regular uh, user base, user or target groups that you sell your mobile phones to. You're trying to penetrate into a new market. Anyone want to answer? No. Yes. Or if you don't want to choose housewives and security guard, uh, think maybe uh, you can tell me about any kind of user group that is uh, very sort of unexpected by how they would use mobile phones or maybe not really looked upon as a primary research group. So do you want us to describe the, how they would use it or how we yeah, would just think like, they would use it? Um, you can tell me how, because how they would use it would first come, uh, the first thing would be how you think uh, they would use yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So for instance, housewives in, um, let's say where I come from, Jordan, um, if I would think about that, I would think that they um, really would uh, focus on the visual element or kind of the camera or visual mm -hmm. element of uh, communication with other people more than any technical things, let's say. Okay, so basically for video calls and all, is, is that what you were yeah, saying? Yeah. yeah, kind of, yeah. Okay. Anyone else uh, other than uh, using your mobile phones for video calls by these two user groups? Uh, anyone would want to comment anything or say something? Harris, do you want, would you like to say how if, uh, if you... Mm. Maybe for security guards um, or patrolling, like you can monitor CCTV while well, you walk around patrolling. Maybe. Okay, so basically, right. your the mobile phone is mobile phone is connected to the CCTV of the place. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, anyone and and what? Uh, so if I talk about, uh, see, we know security guards would mostly uh, depends on the either would you either use mobile phones, uh, like if you go by the example Harris has given, so they would use the mobile phones if it's connected to CCTV, irrespective of the time of the day, because uh, they uh, depends on when the they have their duty. What about housewives? What time do you think housewives would be using mobile phones for making video calls? Can anyone answer this? Housewives would probably uh, use it more during the day, but often between the time 9.30 to 1, you know, sometimes uh, when you really want to ask someone for a particular recipe, or then, you know, you just want to know how much to put in a, how much ingredient to put in a particular uh, meal or something. I think that will be the best time. Or then even in the afternoon, siesta time. Okay. Okay, post-lunch. Yeah. Post-lunch. Okay, that's great. The time they, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, Meena, please, please. So that's the time they have for themselves, you know, so they can nicely uh, talk. Right, absolutely. Usually for Indian housewives, between two to four is a, a napping time where have, they have their own time. Where, so in, this is also the time where she can, you know, choose to speak with her relatives and, you know, people whom she wants to talk with. Right. What about uh, you, Rachel or Danny? Uh, can you answer this? What time do you think most housewives, according to your cultures, would be uh, using mobile phones or, or what they would use it for? Other than looking for recipes, asking recipes or then video calls. Can you answer this?
Rachel and Danny, can you answer this? Uh, what What is your thoughts on what time would the would housewives be using mobile phones? Hello. I've been getting yeah. ready for work the past few minutes. I might have missed that mm -hmm. part. Sorry. I've been getting ready for work the past few minutes. I might have missed that part. Okay, so, uh, all right, so do you, would you, do you want me to repeat the question? Or uh, do you, would you want to answer it or do you want me to skip it? Uh, repeat. Okay, so my question was, uh, let's assume you were a company that makes mobile phones and you have your phone set of primary users, say young children, office goers and XYZ. But you have to tap into a new market of housewives. So what? Uh, what time do you, I have two questions for you. What time do you think that uh, housewives would be using the mobile phone and uh, what sort of, uh, what purpose would they be using the mobile phone for if you were to introduce your, your mobile phone to them? Um, sort of like early in the morning, maybe around night 10 or evening to keep in touch with people that they don't really see if they don't go out much or something. Okay. All right, great. So see, there are so diff uh, so we uh, we got different answers in terms of when the housewives uh, use mobile phones. So it means that every culture interaction of every uh, product with a person is different uh, for a diff for for each product. So if we could imagine if you could ask these housewives to do a life logging or a mobile ethnography or like a digital diary of themselves using the mobile phones or uh, maybe something like how TikTok works, but not TikTok doesn't exist in India anymore or whichever other ways like TikTok. So if you could, they could just do a diary study and maybe like a life logging thing and send you across to you uh, to let you know as to when, what time uh, and not just the time as to what they are using the mobile phones for it will give you a better insight about the use of mobile phones by housewives in a very different in different way in different cultures okay uh, again uh, this is something very uh, simple i'll just uh, quickly wrap this up and uh, it helps the uh, visuals help us to empathize on the activities that are being performed if you see uh, here the, both people are engaged in gardening this is uh, this this, this gentleman is also doing something related to gardening, but he has a different body language, different way of hand of holding, uh, I think that's an ax or some sort of a stick or, uh, and this lady is watering the plants in a very different way. So each gender and each age group or each person interacts or does uh, the activity in a very different way. So visuals help us to empathize with the uh, activities that are being performed irrespective of uh, the gender or age or also try to understand how each gender relates to the activities that they are doing. For example, I'll give an example of Maggie uh, is a product uh, very famous in India and I think it, I don't know if it exists in other parts of the world and uh, probably would be there in Southeast Asia. Harris, do you have Maggie in uh, Indonesia? Is this a product over there? No, we don't, but it's popular in Singapore and Malaysia. Great. So in India, Maggie started a campaign called Me and Mary Maggie. Mary is like my basically. So me and my Maggie. So they asked their consumers to send them videos and even uh, it was mostly photos, uh, click pictures of how they associate themselves with the, with the product that is Maggie. So that was uh, something uh, that's an example of life logging and also we can call it mobile ethnography. It uh, helps, it helped the, um, and this they ideally started doing, or I think uh, during or after the, after Maggie started losing business because of some issues in the market. And uh, so they just wanted to uh, get an emotional reaction from people as to our, uh, not just emotional reaction as to how they interact with the product that is Maggie. So it helps to understand the functional relationship of all language com components. And uh, as in a mobile ethnography, or if you are in an interview uh, with the, some participants, some user group, you get to know the entire body language and expression of that person. And it is even more beneficial if you are interacting during an activity. Suppose you go to a gymnasium and you want to do 
to study on people how they use gym equipments so you can just uh, get to understand how each person is behaving and their expressions are they anxious or are they motivated or who is using what equipment uh, and then i have um, and it helps to understand the relationship of visual form and its functions which is already explained it helps to focus on the applied and collaborative use of visual representation this is very important in current times because if you have visuals visual representation you can actually uh, understand things or interact better with it, your own team as a research team and maybe uh, have a more collaborative interaction or collaborative something we call as collaborative research collaborative ethnography even with the participants so now uh, what cave paintings did earlier that was a way of collaboration uh, someone had cave paintings and rock paintings then the group moved on the ancestors moved on to different place new people came in they saw the cave paintings they got an idea as to what might have existed there something similar is some uh, in essence is now done by things like say myro board or so we have discussion forums it's all collaborative uses that's another importance of uh, visual form and its functions and it helps to get maximum authentic information in limited amount of time time is a very crucial factor in research especially business research so if you are say in a amusement park and you have only two days to understand what sort of people come on weekends on you know, to the amusement park uh, so two days might not be sufficient uh, so if i ask you in two days how what how much of these data can you gather without any visual tools in your hand like for an amusement park can anyone answer this like uh, 10% 20% how much can you uh, gather in two days Twenty five percent yes um, I know 25% anyone want to say this and you have it's just the weekends that you have to focus on and uh, you just have to tell your client as to what sort of people are mostly coming to the amusement park on weekends and uh, in terms of demographics seventy five percent okay so it's seventy five percent in two days that's that that's that's a pretty huge amount <laughs> yeah but if you <laughs> if it but if you did not have any visual tool in your hand you would have just your diary and a pen maximum 30% okay yes harris want to say something you were thinking something if uh... uh i think it's maybe 10% or less yes yes so uh yeah guys so if you have no visual tools in our hand and amusement park is such a huge space most of the amusement parks that is what where i've been to and so we can only capture maybe certain slides or certain uh or during certain time zone or time period but if we have and if you have to just write it down but if we have a camera in our hand or if we have visual tools in our hand uh, we can capture much more than because let's assume i stand in one corner and i start documenting uh, uh, say a uh, ferris wheel or something like that and uh, and i can actually instead of writing down what sort of people are coming and instead of manually writing down if i can just shoot take a bit small video of it i can see the different age groups that are coming uh, on using the um, Ferris wheel or wh whatever uh, uh, thing that is there, and uh, and also which maybe which background, so social background they are coming from, by understanding how they are dressed, are they more uh, young people or families or how it is. So uh, so perhaps if we had just two days, uh, our uh, information that we gather would almost double. When we have a visual tool, I won't say it will become hundred percent, but it will uh, certainly become uh, forty to fifty percent extra than what we would have got by just writing things down on a piece of paper. Uh, again, the finally, visuals help us to know the different landscapes or how cultures are spread across different temporal and spatial landscapes, and giving us comparative analysis. Now. Um, 
when we say OTT is used by different sort of people, TV is used by different group of people, radio is used by different group of people. Now, when we see things, when we uh, see things, when you understand how each person is using these mediums, we get to understand how the ecosystem uh, with regards to these items or products is spread across uh, the across the entire landscape. Uh, any any concerns? Any questions, guys? Just temperature check here, and everyone is good, and every, no one is like tired or exhausted or bored. Any concerns? It's all okay. Okay, so uh, I need to have uh, some bit of water, so I'm just going to give you guys a poll. You must have got a poll uh, on your screens. Can you see something? Is there a poll come that's, can be, that is visible on your screens? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, can you just take the yeah, poll? Yeah. So, so I have like a little bit of water. Okay. <laughs> okay, two people say I'm dressed to kill, but you can't see. And one person says, oh no, I thought you could only see my formal top shirt. Okay. Uh, all right, great. Uh, I, I have a feeling that uh, it, well, one of the persons who uh, uh, opted for the last option is I'm dressed to kill, but you can't see is uh, are probably money. I'll, I'll <laughs> and Rachel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, probably the second person is what? Rachel? Is, is that you who's dressed to kill but I can't see? <laughs> no, I did the dress professionally. <laughs> okay, so, uh, okay, so, uh, um, so see, that's, that's what, guys, when by talking to you and by, I sort of tapped into what your personalities might be. That's, uh, and, uh, but if I could see, you could see your background, then it would have been much, much easier for me, or maybe quicker for me to uh, say that who has opted for which uh, option. Then I think uh, never I always dress up uh, or professionally can, is that Harris? Okay. No, <laughs> okay. I'm dressed to kill. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, no, I thought you could only see my formal top or shirt. Maybe that's Meenal. Is that you, Meenal? Choosing the second option? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, see, uh, it uh, became easier for me to say that Meenal is uh, wearing, uh, uh, chose the second option is maybe because you know, maybe I know Meena from before, or maybe uh, the way she's dressed up, or the way her personality is, or so it's. Uh, if I, ha but it becomes much easier for you to answer these things, answer such questions when you can see things. And uh, so this was just a quick exercise for all of you. And can anyone guess? So uh, what would I choose? Can you take a wild guess? What would I, am I in my pajamas or am I in my, uh, what, what sort of thing am I, would I be wearing? Can anyone take a wild guess by my personality? Jeans or shorts. Okay, Meena Jeans says, or shorts. Okay, anyone I would say I would say that you're wearing like a formal top, but um, you're yeah. wearing pajamas and the button or something. Uh, anyone, so both are wrong. Anyone would also would want to take a, <laughs> take a dig at what would I be wearing? Obviously, dressed to kill. In the first option. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I would probably say I'm dressed to kill. Depends on how you see how would, you would want to call me dressed to kill. I am in my uh, in, in my yoga pants right now because uh, I would want to start exercising once I'm done with the <laughs> session. Uh, so yes. So if I I mean uh, uh, so uh, basically I'm in comfortable clothing. So. Yeah, this was just a, uh, this was just a small exercise to stimulate your memory and make you think uh, out of the box. Okay, coming back uh, to the, uh, the uh, presentation. Uh, when we say uh, 
it's about uh, ideation, execution, and ethics. So whenever you want to decide what you want to capture, what visuals would you want to include in the ethnographic research or ethnography, it always has to be considered from the cultural perspective or the, prime, or the point of view of your prime focus group. Keeping in mind, uh, prime, firstly that, and then keeping in mind what you want to capture. You want to include, uh, so divide your, uh, your uh, question or research question in, with respect to things that you that are essential to have uh, that is the visuals essential to have the visuals suitable to have and the visuals that are like good to have and then go ahead and plan your research uh, and or rather the visuals that you would want to include then next important thing is most important thing rather is a matter of ethics ethics is, a, is one of the most important it is gained more importance since the time GDPR has come in, in 2018. Now, uh, when we say ethics, uh, it, ethics is like a double-edged sword and sometimes we want to capture things that uh, maybe uh, that is definitely, definitely needed for our research, but we can't just do that because we've not got permission and uh, it is, uh, the, the participant is not comfortable or anything like that. So, uh, so our goal always should be in that case to uh, look at things which are focus on items or that are not identifiable, but can let us know in some sense, in a sense, kind of symbolic sense, what uh, sort of uh, participant that are uh, the personality of the participant or how they interact with. For example, I gave you an example uh, in the beginning of music systems and television. Maybe you need not have the music system or, a or you need not have the participant actually present in the room. If you just know this is a room belonging to a teenager and you have a music system over there, or if you could just capture the music system and other elements in the room, maybe clothes are lying here and there, maybe books are in one corner, you are getting to know the personality of your participant by just seeing other elements. So this is how you can work your way around ethics. Uh, so, and lastly, it says in this slide, however, as a researcher, you may need to at least present the, so yes, so you, if you need to present the emotions and cognitive thinking process behind the hidden information for the purpose of interpretation analysis of bigger research question uh, to answer the why, this, for this reason, you can use symbolic references instead of showing persons, instead of making your participants easily identifiable. But if you have the consent, consent and uh, permission by the participant, Yes, that you are like good to go. So it's uh, ideation uh, from the point of view or execution from the point of view of the participant. And finally, the deciding what you want to capture. Then we look into the ethics, what is allowed, what is not allowed. Then we like along with that, we take the consent. So this is how the entire thing works. It's more so we have to be more careful when we use, uh, when we introduce visuals in between, because or when we, are into, uh, when we, are, we have to capture vis things visually, because visuals are something that you see that it is easily identifiable. Yes, this person might be this person, and this is what this person is like. So we are making our participants more, or our users, or people we, are, we want to research upon more vulnerable. So that is the responsibility we have to focus on. Uh, great. So you can see these points. This, these are sort of self-explanatory, most of them. This is the power of visuals in delivering, delivering better results. So I call it a super seven. There can be more more uh, uh, things that can be added to this, but this is something I feel are very primary in helping us in uh, getting better results, sticks in the long term memory faster, transmits message faster, comprehension is better, includes both emic and etic perspective, making the output more diverse, again, traverse emotions, understanding the correlation between product service objectivity and consumer subjectivity, and the incorrectly, used incorrectly can deter audiences. So uh, can anyone say something about any of these points mentioned, uh, any reflections that you have? Uh, especially on point number four, which says includes both emic and etic perspective and making the output diverse. And the second last points, which talks about product objectivity and consumer subjectivity. Anyone wants to say something for these two points? Um, so can it be a general point? Yes, anything that comes to your mind. 
Yeah, um, so there is a uh, very interesting kind of uh, music product that I saw. It was a, like a multi multimedia app uh, called Biophilia by an Icelandic singer, and she kind of released it. Um, and it was kind of a, it really taught music elements in a visual way rather than, uh, you know, books and music theory stuff and, and you see. And it was much kind of, a, uh, yeah, it, it, the idea of it is, is, as you said, to kind of transmit messages faster. But what's more, more fascinating was that she was saying that in the, in the schools, the kids were learning things that, uh, so it was a, kind of a targeted for kids. And, um, and she was saying that the kids were learning things, uh, music elements um, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. musicians usually learn in years, but they, the kids learn it in weeks, uh, which was really kind of outstanding. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, so it was, uh, the message was transmitted faster. It, it stuck in the memory faster, as in for a long term. Yeah, but also, I think also a kind of, you know, bridges the understanding of human connection and music. So like, not just kind of introducing music as a, you know, objective, this and that, but also kind of letting um, it was very playful in a way the app is. It kind of lets you uh, play with notes and do all that. So it really does bring subjectivity into the objectivity of music, if that makes sense. Right, right, absolutely. Uh, anyone would want to talk about the second last point or any, any, anything? Uh, maybe Danny can say something. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm behaving like a class teacher. I usually teach students. So I'm sorry if I'm behaving like a class teacher right now. <laughs> Danny? Okay, I, can, I, I cannot. Anyone else wants to say something on the points mentioned here? Like an example how uh, uh, Mani has given. How would you pronounce your name, Mani? Is that the correct way? Yeah, I'm Muslim actually, but this is the name registered on Zoom for some reason, a computer, sorry. Okay, okay. Anyone want to say something, Harris? Would you want to say something with regards to the points mentioned? Yes, I think for the product or service objectivity and consumer subjectivity, since you bring out uh, the example of cooking oil, um, I mean, there are some interesting cases in Indonesian culture where consumers actually use cooking oil other than for cooking purpose. So, um, like uh, the, there is this culture of, uh, uh, you know, there is this belief that uh, if you are exposed to uh, to open air uh, too much, then the the wind might enter your body, and uh, the way to let the wind out is actually use a coin and uh, dip it into uh, cooking oil and uh, scrub your back with the coin. Uh, mm. So I mean, um, the word is not uh, intended for for that the product but it's up to the consumers to actually find different ways to use it. Absolutely. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes, ab absolutely. Exactly. So the product or the service is an objective entity. It is, has its own features, its own uh, things surrounded around it. But how, as you said, Harris, how uh, people use uh, the product is up to them, which makes it very subjective. Yes, oil is supposed to be used for cooking. Uh, for example, when we take coconut oil, it is used for cooking, it is used uh, as a hair oil, it is used for, you know, uh, uh, to eat, to cook, or, or it is used for massages, different, different things. So how a person uses that product, it becomes uh, their own uh, sub, uh, subjective preference. And uh, that's something what the Ma Maggie campaign did. The Maggie was an objective element item or the product. And when people uh, had sent their responses, the, the photographs to uh, Maggie, their, uh, the pictures explained to them how they're subjectively connected to that particular product that is Maggie. Great, uh, temperature check guys, all good? Okay, uh, all right. Yes. Yes, okay, great, uh, one second. So uh, a small, a quick exercise now. I'm just going to stop sharing uh, or share a new post actually. One second. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to be posting one link in the chat box 
and if you have not uh, mentioned uh, your responses you can just mention just go to the chat box uh, please and you can just uh, mention your responses this is something that i already shared in the mail also uh, but if you've not done it or you want to do it again you can just uh, let me know you can just do it now so basically the question that will pop up uh, when you click on the mentimeter link is what visuals or images come to your mind on reading the word touch? The reason I've used the word touch is because touch is a something that is really compromised and there's a lot of tensions going on around touch in these days. Let me also open the presentation so that you can see. Okay, so this is the responses that I've got from different sort of people. Um, I had posted the question on uh, social media. Okay, I can see this board working. Okay, are we, let me know when, when you're done, guys. So, I'm done. Okay, okay, Harris is done. Diana, are you, are you done? Danny, okay, Danny is uh, driving, he says. Okay, Diana, are you done? I think um, they wrote that they're driving and they're not, they're driving. Yeah, okay, okay, Danny is driving and Diana is done. Okay, uh, great. And there is Nish okay, someone else is here. Okay, uh, so guys, all right, uh, moving on to uh, this uh, slide or this uh, what you see in front of you. Uh, the re see, the, when I when you read the word touch, and the reason you gave such responses because these were the maybe things that are that you maybe are looking forward to or that you're feeling nostalgic about and they are all all stored in your visual memory and but imagine if i these would be in, instead of words the words when you see it, they're an equally important role but instead of this words they were images or pictures you would have even got to know get got a slight understanding of uh, without knowing who the person is get a slight understanding of what kind of a person might have written personality wise what sort of person might have written about uh, this uh, uh, option or this e example uh, so maybe a person who says feather floating in air maybe they're looking for to go outside to be outside uh, and uh, they're feeling claustrophobic and uh, but if you I would have seen exactly uh, an image of a feather floating in air. They would have shared something. Maybe I would have got to know where, what sort of space that they're talking about, where they belong to, where they come from. So that was the purpose of this small exercise, uh, just to uh, sort of stimulate your visual memory, just to stimulate uh, your thoughts. And uh, when you have visuals, it becomes even faster. And um, and uh, depends on the kind of visual you have. If you have uh, representational visuals, maybe even faster. If you have mnemonics, maybe it might just take time. If you have some sort of instructional visual, maybe something different. If you have infographics, maybe. So every kind of visual reacts different way by uh, how they stimulate our visual memory. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the exercise. What, what, what do you guys, but if you see this board, what can you what uh, what can you interpret from this board? What is the general mood of people that who have given responses on this question? What's the general mood? Um, affection, I would say. Uh, affection. Yeah. Okay, great. Affection is a great word, probably because heart, skin, love, story, hug uh, is like popping out on the board. 
Is that the reason? Or uh, yeah, I mean general, I would say. Okay. Uh, anyone else would want to say what? Uh, what's the general mood you think of this board? If they were your say participants, and you had done this exercise, yes, Harris. I think uh, it's related to maybe innocence, like okay, um, babies, yeah. Okay, so you think the general mood here is innocence? Yeah, I think. Even yeah. though there are like touch phone and all, but I, I, I get that sense. Okay, great. It's, it's like baby or innocent. Yes, absolutely. So uh, the reason I did this exercise is because now we cannot go out in the field. So we cannot do classic ethnographic field research. So we have to look into options where we can somehow uh, use digital medium or visual medium uh, to become our feet, our uh, cultural or social spaces. Uh, so if uh, so here, if you had images or say let's say words only, you can get to know how uh, each person would be reacting. So instead of putting the word touch, if I would have said what visuals pop in your mind on seeing the or on, uh, on uh, seeing your your product mention your product and then you can get such responses so your ethnographic field becomes such digital medium or visual medium this is just one example and similar thing can happen uh, this is something would, that would fall under the purview of digital ethnography and uh, something similar can be done on social media so digital ethnography would be including understanding cultures and societies surrounded, how they behave on, different people behave uh, on, uh, with respect to your product on social media, Facebook, Twitter, or whichever uh, social media that you want to uh, tap into. So this is a good exercise since uh, we are limited to, we'll have our limitations of not being able to go out, which uh, personally I am not liking. And uh, I don't know about you guys. But uh, moving on to the last slide, um, should, should, should we want me to explain this slide? It's about digital ethnography or should we, can we just move into the Q&A now? Because it's already 7.30. You guys want to move can into? move in. Yeah, I think we can do that. Just okay, so be yes, because I've already sent this entire paper presentation to all of you, I guess. you uh, Hopefully, you, each one of you has received it. So if, if you, uh, you can just go through it again. But meanwhile, uh, I'm, uh, you, you're both are welcome to ask me any questions right now. And if you have any reflections or anything, you can ask me. I'll let this slide be here in case you would want to ask me something in regards to this slide right now. With regards to digital ethnography or ethnography. Okay, um, I have a question. Yes. So uh, when it comes to, um, let's say biases, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about um, using um, the visual for consumption, let's say. Can, do you see a space where um, that can open up space for biases to be more kind of um, emphasized? For example, uh, for instance, like cons um, employers in the mm -hmm. UK are now looking for um, kind of like instead of mm -hmm. seeing CVs without pictures, they're looking to see pictures of people. So, you know, mm -hmm. can you see ways in which that can bring in more um, discrimination probably or things of that sort? into the visual, like kind of misapplications, let's say. I don't know. Okay, okay. So it's basically the example that you gave, just to rephrase this, because you, you're saying that the employers are asking for images uh, and pictures of the uh, the uh, people wanting to empl uh, apply yeah. for the job. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so th th there's a, there is a benefit of it also. Uh, and there is, it's like a double-edged sword, if I may use that word. So by seeing an image uh, of a person, maybe they are trying to understand the personality of what sort of person that person is but it's very difficult to understand just by a small passport site for photograph of that person what sort of personality that person might possess so personally i would if i were an employer i would uh, i mean if i had a choice i would ask for more pictures of that person so i tap into more details visual details of the personality of my or the prospective employee instead of just seeing a passport size photo which may make me more judgmental or i'll have my own prejudices around it and uh, uh, biases will be formed around it oh 
this this uh, there's this is a, this person is a woman okay maybe uh, we can compromise i'm sorry for some sort of like feminist over here but uh, maybe we can give her less salary oh this person belongs to x race or x social group ma maybe we should not take this person because this person does not their cultural background or social background doesn't belong to or doesn't match with the organizational culture that we have so uh, if you i would not uh, favor just a single picture uh, personally and it leads to biases but i will be open for uh, ha having more pictures if that that that's acceptable um, just to understand the personality of my prospective client prospective employee better does that answer your question yeah, yeah. but then yeah. okay so you saying that yeah it could be okay but then don't you think that mm, maybe some people are better at kind of visualizing themselves and other people so really essentially it's inherently unethical to use that for un kind of employment purposes but then i don't know but then again like you can kind of say that well anyway if i do kind of call them for an interview i do kind of still rely on the visual element anyway yes abs know. abs absolutely ab ab absolutely so that's that's why i said that you would as it is we calling them for say a one on one interview or say a video interview which i would be you would want to do it after they have gone through a certain round of interviews you will eventually get to see them get to see them live their entire personality their body language their expressions so uh, asking for their picture yes it becomes very unethical and it uh, creates barriers you tend to uh, so that's what the uh, that's what cognitive biases does to us mostly if we when we see a person we analyze or we have our own thoughts about that person based on what image we see what picture we see we don't always tap into the personality or tap into the uh, skills or knowledge associated or mentioned in that resume or cv so i would personally say uh, it is it, it is it's unethical maybe also but more than that that it creates bias it just blocks us to get more better employees that that's my my yeah. perspective on thank it. you yes uh any other question harris or uh, danny anyone else you can you can write in the chat box or if you guys want you can write here also you can write in the chat box anyone has any question or a reflection you can write in the chat box or write through this mentimeter link Okay um so I have another I don't know if I can Yes yes on. please okay. please you can ask me as many questions as you okay. like Okay yeah. so this is this one is more about um the kind of psychological element so a lot of people would say that like focusing on the picture a lot instead of like content for instance that can be like a as a product that can be a product of how like fast um how our attention is getting shorter and shorter like we we do don't have enough attention span to kind of consume things that more yeah. content so do you think that can uh, you know even though uh, within in this federal element you can you know uh, met, deliver messages faster and all that but then do, do you think that ca that can kind of compromise maybe the value of certain things rather than kind of focusing on the visual mm -hmm. element um i don't know if that makes sense okay so you you basically say if i understand it correctly that you're trying to say that uh, uh, too much emphasis on visual elements or use of visual elements uh, sort of puts a barrier or a roadblock in front of us to deep dive into what is it yeah okay. maybe yeah yeah okay okay uh, okay does anyone else wants to answer some of the question i mean uh, we can have multiple let this session be a little conversation the last uh, few minutes that like 10 20 20 30 minutes that we have Harris, would you want to answer this, or maybe Nishant or Diana? Anyone wants to answer this? Harris, would you want to answer the question? Sorry, can you rephrase again? Okay, Man, uh, Mani, would you want to just rephrase the question for Harris? Uh, yeah. So I was saying that, like, uh, focusing on the visual and all that can maybe compromise the, like, um. the value of things rather than kind of shallowy like shallow kind of judgments of things just based on the picture or something yeah how yeah actually yeah i actually have the same question because okay. uh, like when you do okay. say a uh, visual photography uh, on social media for example like instagram mm -hmm. where people mm -hmm. tend to hide their actual self um mm -hmm. like, would it 
be a biased uh, view where we only look at you know the the side that people wants to wants, wants you to see in, instead of the other side right Sorry, so it's the, actually giving more questions than than answers <laughs> yeah no problem that's okay that that's okay so now i know this is an important question so basically if we say uh, yes if you just so we cannot entirely focus on visuals yes they so they uh, make things better they make our research better but uh, we have to also and deep dive uh, before taking a visual taking a picture or photograph or a video we have to folk deep we have to understand why do we want to do that what purpose it serves what are we focusing on and then again after looking at it deep dive think about what do we uh, why did we use it why did we capture it so the how why what or everything becomes important before and after we take the visuals so if we just focus on the visual then yes we create a roadblock for ourselves now this becomes even more challenging on social media or say digital media because on digital media most of it we always uh, see uh, see a certain aspect of people's personality certain they, it is always a well crafted post most of the time so we see people doing self commodification we see people doing humble bragging it can be for different reason maybe they this herd mentality maybe they are want to form a cocoon maybe it is a safe space for them uh authenticity is a big challenge on social media it is always a big challenge uh, on social media and uh, we uh we it's difficult for us to also find out that the, why is someone posting what they are posting or why is someone liking what they are liking so just by seeing the images they are posting or visuals they are liking or xyz uh that is not enough because that does not help us deep dive or get a better insight into what this that person is all about for that we have to uh, maybe understand that person from different perspectives look into different posts that person is liking or uh, maybe look into different posts that person is writing and try to get more and more understanding of uh, more and more authentic observation of that particular ethnographic account and uh, one way to personally what i think personally i feel that one of the ways that helps mostly in uh, which is in such cases especially in case of social media or digital media is doing something called a social listening and uh, social listening not just doing social listening in the way social listening exists like observing things and seeing what people are reacting in that way but maybe if possible get do something which is known as phenomenology phenomenology here would be you let's say you have a user group and you have a user group for a product you join that group as a user not as an observer and you get your first person subjective response so that's these are different ways that you can incorporate uh where if when you do phenomenology yes you will not just get a subjective response but you simultaneously you are also getting to know how people are responding or talking what are they talking about with regards to that product or anything that the group talks about so there are uh, different ways so we cannot use uh, visuals uh, just uh, as as it is just as it is it has to always it is always better to especially in business research it is always better to combine it with the right proportion of text and other things that are needed does that answer the question yeah 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 yeah, yeah i think yeah i think it does yeah Okay, now Danny is asking me that can you tell us about ethnograph ethnography product? That's do okay, documentary film. So documentary films are one kind of uh, way of uh, presenting a visual output. Um, like you can, I mean, depend upon, depending upon what sort of documentary film that you want to make and why do you want to always why do you want to make something? What do you want to include? and in a documentary film you can't include everything that you might have researched upon you have to just focus on what is most essential so suppose you would want to show your client a, a documentary film on a certain product that uh, they would want you to they, they have asked you to research upon you can't just show every uh, goddamn thing that you be researching about you just have to as i said focus on capturing the essential element the suitable element or uh, maybe like a good to have element accordingly because your client has no time to sit and watch a one or two hour long documentary they have just like they just want would want you to focus they would they can just maybe see part some parts that, that is essential for their product so uh, so we have to uh, make a documentary film keeping these things in mind 
any other questions anyone yeah i mean or okay i have i yeah. uh, have la last one um, yes you so kind of mm -hmm. yeah so kind of going back to the ethics of it um um so let's just say um you know i can for example within my own consumption of digital media i do see a kind of like a commodification of people that makes sense so um maybe um people tend to hire or use um like certain characteristics um for people to um kind of advertise let's say a certain product or a certain service or like because it um you know it gets you clicks if you have certain standards so for instance within maybe standards that are uh, embedded within like structural racism or maybe uh, mm -hmm. people just kind of looking to hire attractive people or whatever that is um so do, do you see how like that can lead to more uh you know uh in a sense exclusion of other people um or maybe kind of perpetuating cultural um ideas or cultural kind of beauty standards that you know kind of affect uh society as a whole so basically the question is uh, how, how visual play a role of uh, creating uh, uh um like sort of feeding into ethnocentrism is that what you're saying yeah <laughs> yeah can, yeah yes. okay okay uh okay so uh Yes, uh, I would not deny that. that. That's why my last point in uh, uh, the Super 7 was if the visuals are used incorrectly, that can create ethnocentric boundaries that can deter the audience. And for example, one of the most hot topics in terms of visuals, if I may say, in terms of advertisement, is uh, like fair, if you've heard about Fair and Lovely. So Fair and Lovely is a product, or it's a beauty product, it's a face cream that's been there in India from since, uh, like, it's probably uh, since the time I was born or something. So uh, it's been many years. So uh, uh, so Fair and Lovely, it the advertisement focuses on that if you use that cream, if you're dark skin, you will get a lighter skin. So it's a visual, but it's creating ethnocentric, uh, feeding into uh, ethnocentric divide. It is creating a bias which is a matter of, again, ethics, an ethical question, that uh, uh, why did you not think about, or why did they that time not think about uh, all different kinds of people in terms of uh, skin color, in terms of the different demographics that who might use this product? Why are they trying to focus just on a certain product? Uh, why are they focusing just on a certain consumer group? And uh, it's again misleading people who are dark skin that yes, you will uh, become fairer. So again, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's a matter of ethics, that's unethical. Now what a fair and lovely in the recent times in this year, I, I think yeah, it's this year only, what they've done is they, are, they have dropped the word fair from their name, fair and lovely. And now they're uh, using it as glow and lovely, but changing name doesn't change the product, doesn't, doesn't change the advertisement, doesn't change anything. So this is just one example. Yes, you need to use visuals correctly because you have responsibility because when you show visuals, because if you write something, it, you, you focus or, or you target or you reach out to certain section of people, maybe. But if you someone sees something, as I said, visuals are a way of collaboration between audiences and the, or the actors and the spectators. The actors would be the ad, maybe visuals and spectators would be people who see the visuals so we have to be we have a lot of moral responsibility to how we use the visuals and how we present it and obviously it is not possible to uh, make everyone happy but we have to be careful as to not show things or maybe show things in a way in a symbolic way that does not really offend anyone does that answer the question yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Harris, any more questions? Uh, Danny, Danny, did I answer your question? Okay, so uh, anyone? Nishant, uh, any question? Uh, Harris, any question? Or a reflection, maybe? Anything? Any thoughts? I'm just thinking that it's, it's going to be a good combination between visual ethnography that is focusing on visuals and um, semiotics that is focusing more on the linguistic yes. side. Yes, semiotics and symbolism uh, also become a very important part, especially when we, ethics is a, is a major matter. Ethics is something because consent is very important. Uh, we don't have it and we have to really work our way around ethics.
so uh, yes uh, semiotics become very important uh, yeah and uh, any any other reflection guys anything i have a more of a like a applicable question of like how 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 common is this kind of model in anthropology for people who generally hire maybe that's kind of more pragmatic question of like um do is that like um how is it used in anthropology right now or maybe like um the applicable fields in business okay so how how business uh, application of anthropology is, is that yeah. the question yeah yeah okay uh, business application of anthropology uh, uh, harris is more experienced in i i am a visual anthropologist so harris is more experienced in qualitative research so maybe they can he can answer do you, do you think anthropologists can benefit i think uh, money is a uh, is an anthropologist if i have maybe are you are you money is are you an anthropologist is that why the question has come in I know. Ask me. No, I'm not yet. <laughs> okay, no worries. I'm just so, more thinking about it. Okay, great. So, but Harris can answer your question. Maybe he can answer both of us. <laughs> How uh, should <laughs> anthropologists be applying for qualitative research or job, or should we like pack up bags and? <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's massively important right now. Um, I mean. Traditional qualitative is more on about interviews. Um, you do focus groups um, and in-depth interviews, but it's it's just scratching the surface. Um, and I think most of uh, qualitative researchers now are looking at uh, you know methodologies like ethnography, um, semiotics, uh, anything that can you know uncover uh, the 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 deepest motivation. Um, instead of just what what is being said by the consumers but what what is actually being done by them um i mean in 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 my current role i think we've we've done so many uh ethnography projects um, and i think it's getting very very common right now and i think anthropology is is uh is is very important right now for marketing research uh, but i don't think that uh, there are Many anthropologists that realize this. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so my take over here is that see when, when we talk about anthropology, the uh, or the terms or the different elements, things that of or definitions in anthropology. For example, let's take an example of say rite of passage. Rite of passage is a very something very common in when you study uh, groups and uh, in indigenous groups or folk groups or any kind of ethnic group. So, but uh, my my point here is the terminologies that are used in anthropology can also be applicable to a more business sense because though rite of passage would be uh, in uh, separation and cooperation of a person, say from uh, someone who is single and that person is getting married and then having children, so like that. But a product or a service, I think also a business also goes through rite of passage in a maybe in a different way. And so anthropological terminologies or aspects or uh, different uh, understanding uh, theories uh, precisely can be applicable in a business sense also. And uh, uh, now uh, here visuals can play a, uh, maybe a role of for bridging the gap between anthropology and more business research because time is a big group big concern in business research and fund, funding is a big concern in business research or qualitative research or ux research uh, and uh, unlike anthropology unlike ethnography which where uh, classic anthropologists take a lot of time we might not get enough time in business research so if you want to look into things from an anthropological perspective understand cultures better or maybe society is better and also focus on the business goal or the product goal or however it is we can use visual medium to uh, bridge the gap so yes, so uh, I think uh, culture researchers or business researchers should maybe start befriending more anthropologists and all. So <laughs> yeah, any other uh, reflection? Any other thoughts? I mean, you guys can let me know later on also. You can reach out to me. I think most of you would have my email address. And... Uh, Anything else? Any questions are welcome. Or maybe you can ask me later on if you have something else comes to your mind. I'll be sharing this recording with everyone. And uh, you already have the PowerPoint presentation. Is there anyone who doesn't have the presentation? 
or I think I, I must have sent it to everyone. Anything else, guys, did you want to ask or talk about or want me to speak? Uh, is there any books or something that maybe uh, we can read? Uh, depends. If you, are, you asking, are you asking about uh, like classic uh, books and ethnography, classical et visual ethnography or more modern versions? Uh, both, I think. Uh, on uh, okay, so maybe uh, from perspective, business research or UX research, or maybe more modern uh, books, more modern versions, you can read the books by Sarah Pink. I just write it in the chat section. Or uh, if you want to uh, look into books, uh, more classical books, you can read uh, books by Jean. Uh, John Bush, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, so he is uh, known as the father of cinema, uh, cinema verite. Cinema verite would mean uh, like uh, real life cinema or caption things that are as it is in real life. Thank you. Um, any other reflections? So. Okay, so before I uh, close, guys, uh, just quick exercise. So I just can see my and, and Harris's video. Uh, can I just have a five minute quick uh, fun exercise? And can everyone turn on their videos if that's okay? And yeah. Sorry, uh, the thing is, on my, I, I was on the phone, but my phone uh, is dying right now. So I'm a computer, I don't have a camera. So sorry, I can't do this. Okay, no, all right, no problem. Any, uh, uh, what about others? Okay, all right, so let's just uh, just focus on mine and Harris's uh, background image. Uh, can you talk, can you, or uh, maybe uh, we have Diana, you can see her room now. Uh, can you, anyone would want to say, what do you think about our personalities when you see our background images? I would say for Harris, he's um, uh, more like calm and kind of, um, uh, kind of in, in the kind of, you know, uh, calm mood and tranquility and all that. I don't know. That's uh, true. Okay. <laughs> I said the same thing for Harris. He's very calm and composed. <laughs> and for you, I would say it's a, a little, I don't know. <laughs> okay. It's what more like, yeah. okay, a more like vague, kind of mysterious and a little bit eccentric of the <laughs> background. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. What about Diana? Uh, I can't, I don't know, because it's not a Zoom background, is it? Yeah, and it, it, that, that doesn't really matter. What what comes to your mind by seeing her, whatever, whatever you can see, her, her, her room or her house, anything? Can you see, can you see something? I'm more like, I don't know, chill, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Very great. Homey. A, a homie, great. Uh, Harris, what do you say about Diana's and my, my background? Uh, uh, it's a bit hard to tell for Diana. Um, okay. It's it's a home setting. Uh, actually, I, I cannot read much from there. <laughs> but uh, for you, I think uh, you look very cultural with the background. <laughs> um, someone who might be <laughs> quite driven, I think. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and passionate. Yeah. Okay, great. That's, that's interesting. Uh, Diana, what do you have to say about my background and uh, Harris's background? What do you think about our personalities? What sort of people could we be? You're also a sociologist. you also a sociologist. I'm sure you have something to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like um, Harris' background is kind of a very exciting and very refreshing uh, background where like it's kind of uh, I think wedding scene kind of where in wedding scene we have like uh, exciting and sunshine and everything. It's very kind of refreshing background of Harris. Yes. And uh, Sonia's is kind of, it's, it's colors, colors and uh, it's kind of positive vibe uh, with colors and different uh, like in the indigenous culture and like uh, it's, it's kind of refreshing that is also more exciting and refreshing and want to see that again and again it's kind of 
coming uh, on your face and on your it's, it's just striking on your mind and it's just like to see that continuously it's really focusing actually <laughs> first <laughs> we, we can focus that background and later on on somia <laughs> yeah <laughs> Great, great. Uh, so yeah, so uh, I, for me, I think Harris, I think I also told Harris that he looks a very calm and composed personality. And maybe he's missing the outdoors and uh, sunshine. And uh, Diana, I feel is very, maybe introverted, she's gone. So I think she is very like, introverted. She's a homely person. And uh, yeah, I cannot see. Uh, so I cannot see anyone else. So oh, okay. So I have an extra. I have an exercise. So you guys okay. haven't seen me, so you don't have a visual. So what, <laughs> okay. do you, what do you think of my personality? Okay. Okay. So can you tell us at least some elements that are there in the room where you're sitting? I mean, you you, you need to give okay. us some things. <laughs> okay. Um, I I don't know. So my room I have like a wardrobe. The sun is there. Um kind of open space and I don't have a door to my room actually um, because um, my parents don't yeah they don't like to close my door that's to my room so it's kind of open um, there is a fan here that there's a mirror yeah that's I don't know basic elements and it's what time of the day it is is it uh, that's uh, 5 p.m here okay okay so we have uh, 5 p.m the uh, mania doesn't have a door to his room his parents does not like um, him having a door he has a cupboard uh, in the room it's uh, it's a lot of open space do you have open space next to your room or is it like your room is huge like like um then it's just open like the it just kind of feels exposed because of the no door thingy, uh, but okay. yeah yeah, but it's not, it's not a huge room. It's a, yeah, no, no. Okay, great. So who wants to go first? Danny or uh, Nishant, you can write in the chat box if you want. And Harris or Diana, what do you think about uh, Mani's personality? Is there any personal item that that is very important for you in, in that room? Yeah, his most personal item is... Is himself? No, is that what you said? Yeah, I just just want to know if, if there is any. Okay, yeah, there's any important personal item. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Some, yeah, yes. Can you answer that for us? There is a picture of um, um, that I got from Italy, Florence. So there is a picture I bought, and that's a very nice picture. It's probably the most personal thing I. Yeah. Hear. Can you describe the picture to us? Yes, so it's a fountain that um, so it's a kind of um, it's a um, kind of focuses on a fountain, and the fountain has water that is uh, frozen. Uh, so it's a frozen fountain, and then there is like a um, uh, you know I forgot the name parrot, not a parrot, but like a black okay. bird. Um, okay. Yeah, it's on the fountain, and it's it's a very nice yeah kind of homey picture. Okay, so now Harris, frozen fountain with a black bird, and that's the other elements as. What do you think about his personality? <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you seem very calm uh, and, um, and, and uh, I think approachable, judging by the, by, by, by no door. <laughs> well, I would say yes, you, uh, since there is no door, but it's not it's the door is not there by your own choice it's your parents choice that's so it's like like so so maybe maybe perhaps you are feeling uh, like restrictive uh you are you have an open space like okay the room looks bigger but you're feeling restrictive yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. but but you respect your parents since you're they are your parents and uh since uh, what else since i'm the picture of the frozen fountain and the blackbird that you have bought is maybe uh, uh, you are a deep thinker and you give a lot of importance to aesthetics. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I give importance to aesthetics, but yeah. aesthetics, aesthetics, or I mean, or I don't know, or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, visuals, yeah, visuals, yeah. Uh, or a frozen, frozen fountain, and maybe uh, so, and maybe you are. Also, uh, you you are like 
water, you keep flowing. But when you come across something important, something that you really like, you become very introspective. So you become like frozen water, like deep diving too much into it. I don't know if I'm making sense. Deep analysis, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would ever say that. This is actually top notch. <laughs> so you say uh, visuals, or uh, you have to become a part to psychologist also when you deal with visuals, or when you like. So yeah. I didn't see anything, but yeah, I try to analyze things in my mind. So, uh, dynamic, actually, yeah, kind sorry? of accurate. Yeah, yeah kind yeah, of accurate okay. description. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I wonder, I wonder if we would have done that before we talked. So like. I wonder if uh, we're now analyzing personalities because we already know the people because they kind of talked and the amount of points they raised. Maybe that's, uh, I don't know. Yes, absolutely. That does make a difference. If you would have asked me this uh, same exercise, you would have done it in the beginning. Maybe I would have uh, said different things. But I uh, would have said, still, I, I feel I would have said the same thing that you are introspective because water is, you have a personality of both flowing water and frozen water. <laughs> if I may add that, and uh, uh, and uh, I don't know the, what the black bird is about. Is it a crow? I don't know what sort of bird that is. So eventually, if I knew what the bird is, what kind of bird it is, and maybe you would have told me uh, something more about. Yeah, it. actually, it's a crow. Yeah, it's a crow. Oh, okay. So crow has a personality that uh, they have diverse personality. They are. are uh, it's a bird that is found in a lot of different societies, different spaces, different cultures. And uh, 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 so uh, that's what crow's personality is, I think. So uh, maybe you are someone who welcomes different perspectives. Okay. I don't know. So I don't know. Just a wild thought. Uh, anyone else wants to add on to something to uh, Mani's personality? <laughs> Harris, do you want to say something? Imagine if Mani was your uh, consumer, and you have to understand. You have to create. You have to create a persona. So, so this is like the last question before sell we end up. Sell me something. Sell me something. I want to yeah. buy something. <laughs> sell him something. Create his persona and sell him something <laughs> with the frozen fountain and grow an open door. I don't have enough information to conclude. I think. But I'm sure you would come across such consumers who would give you no information about themselves. But you don't <laughs> yeah. <know. laughs> Okay, Harris, what would you sell me? I mean, if you can't, maybe if not money, you can, you can like, uh, he's made this difficult for us, but. Uh, uh, okay, I can see, okay, there is, uh, this is Danny, I think. Okay, I, I don't know, I can see some something, I don't know what that is. I think Danny is a very outdoorsy sorry, sorry. kind of person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The camera is so bad. <laughs> no problem. No problem. That was a good picture. Can you share? Can, can you share it again? I mean, it doesn't matter how bloody it is. Can you just share it again if that's okay? Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. I just want to share the background. Yeah, anything, anything, or even man, you can just share the background. You need not share your picture. You can just you know use the Zoom background. I don't know if that's possible. At your end. Okay, so Danny is, is is that a is that someone in the jungle? No, uh, that's someone in the rice field. Oh, okay, okay, right, rice fields. Is that you, by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so, can someone, uh, Mani, would you want to say something about Danny's uh, personality? What sort of personality would he possess since he shared this image with us? I feel like um, he is more in touch with uh, nature, in a sense. So he really likes not like doesn't necessarily like artificiality mm. necessarily. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Great, Harris. Would you want to say something about Danny's personality? Great persona, and sell him a product. You couldn't sell to me or Manny. Can you sell something to Danny? I cannot see his picture. Uh, my oh. connection is really bad. Okay, yeah. no. So he, there's a picture of a person in rice fields. That's what the picture is about. <laughs> and Diana, can you say something about Danny's background, his personality? 
the personality should be uh, as uh, 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 Almani has been said uh, that into nature and now uh, what I see is like you, this picture this picture relates to his hard work and creativity and uh, 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 and uh, focus uh, focus on one work which he's, which he's been doing or he wants to go further on with it and uh, uh, seek, uh, seek learning and yeah, uh, that's what I can see in this picture. Yeah, great. I I I would add to this is I think Danny is yes, very it's very he's a very determined person and you're a very culturally rooted person. Is that correct? Are you culturally very rooted and very determined? And uh, you are uh, since you it's a picture of rice uh, rice fields. Maybe you are someone who believes in a lot of iterations in a product cycle, or maybe you are someone who uh, believes in uh, improvising a lot. I don't know if that's correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Uh, great, guys. Uh, any last minute thoughts, anyone, before I. I would sell you, yeah, I would yes. sell you, like, I would sell you maybe some kind of like anthropologist yoga pants. If I had the chance, but okay, I should should I send you my address? Can you send them to me? <laughs> <laughs> if you would buy it, then yes. <laughs> why, why would I? Be? I mean, you should give them to me, or maybe discount them <laughs> to me or something. Yeah, that's true. You, you did give the lesson in the end. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yoga pants is good and would be yeah. What, what sort of yoga pants would you send me? Any particular anthropologist print, space printed on it? Not necessarily anthropologist for face, but like uh, kind of eccentric pants. So okay. like, okay. Uh, yeah, so not like uh, not usual kind of like, uh, you know, one color yoga pants. Yeah. Great. So I'm getting yoga pants from money and Harris, what are you going to get? Give me what are you going to sell? <laughs> not sell to me, but give me. <laughs> yeah. Harris, what would you give me? Yo, for his breaking. What would you give me, Harris? What product would you give me? Mani is giving me yoga pants. All right. Uh, maybe I would sell you a, a picture of the frozen fountain. <laughs> oh, you will sell me the picture of a frozen fountain. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, uh, great. And Danny, what would you uh, sell me or uh, give me as a gift, let's say? Henry, um, can you hear me? Yeah. I don't know. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> well, you look at my personality, you look at the big background, you heard me speak, oh. I've been blabbering from past two hours, anything. What comes to your mind <laughs> would you think would be good for me or you would want to gift me? Uh, okay. Imagine it's my birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What is what is the background and your... Okay, okay, so my... my um, Okay, maybe my my personality. What would you want to sell me? You've, you've been you've seen me from from past two hours or so. So, oh, uh, maybe you are a kind person. So, what would you sell to a kind person? I don't know <laughs> because yeah, yeah, you're great. <laughs> Okay, so the picture, let me just describe the picture. It's about, it's a Kathakali dance. It's a dance form of Kerala, South of India. And uh, I am really into cul different culture, art forms. And I love dancing a lot and I love drama a lot. So basically I'm very artsy kind of a person. Now tell me, what would you send me? Sweet potatoes. Oh, who's going to send me sweet potatoes? Money. Me as well, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, great. And, uh, why? Um, anything else? But why? Just curious. Why sweet potatoes? Is... I don't know. I think uh, <laughs> maybe like people who like uh, music and art like are also into sweet potatoes as well. Are they? Okay. <laughs> great. All right. I will graciously accept sweet potatoes and then do yoga in the yoga pants. <laughs> uh, what about you, Danny? What would you sell me or gift me? Looking at my personality. Sorry, can you repeat? I said, what yes, would you yes. what would you gift me? Uh, looking at my personality or the image behind, what would you gift me? What product would you give me? Like uh, Harris would uh, sell me a fountain stolen from money. 
Mani is going to uh, gift me uh, or sell me uh, yoga pants and sweet potatoes. <laughs> what would you give me? Um, I think it's like, um, movie, I think. A movie, great. That would be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great. What? That's that's interesting. Yeah. What 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 about you? What, what, Sorry. Yes. What please. kind of movie though? What kind of movie? Like, what do you think? Um, okay, let's guess what kind of movie she likes. Like, what kind of movies <laughs> though? Um, I forget the uh, the name of movie, but it's like what genre? Movie, yeah. What jo what genre? Maybe not which one. Maybe what genre? What genre do you think would I uh, have an interest in? Um, I forget it. I forget the name of movie, but it's from India movie. Okay, so do you think I like romantic movies more? I like uh, sci-fi. I like action. I like drama. I like comedy. What do I like more? What do you think I would like, or what do you think what you would want to give me? Um, it's like drama movie. Okay, you would give me a yeah. movie drama. Movie. What I would say, um, more of an action slash comedy. I don't know. Okay, uh, that's interesting. Something like Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's nice. What about you, Diana? Yep, yeah, sorry. Yes, Harris. Yes. I would Harris. say it's going to be a mo mo movie like uh, PK. Oh, PK movie. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, great. I'm your so, yeah. yeah. fan. Okay. Oh, I no. remember it's like Slam Dunk. Slam Dunk Millionaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, not bad. I'll graciously accept all these gifts. Uh, what about you, Diana? What would you sell me or gift me? So, so yeah, <laughs> yes, so, yes. I would like to uh, sell you my uh, like as as like you. Your personality is very creative and very artistic, and uh, you like much colors in your life and your in your mind also. So, I would like to sell you my folk uh, music, my go and uh, go and folk music. And uh, like uh, we have, uh, we have uh, different beautiful um, uh, like arti uh, artifacts. Artifacts. I would like to sell you, which is which is uh, 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 more uh, authentic and uh, way more uh, uh, what is it, ancient. And uh, and I would like to uh, sell you our Goan organic uh, sweets, which has been prepared occasionally. Uh, occasionally uh, festive season in Goa so yeah it's it's I guess it's relates to your personality which you uh, which you which which uh, which is very joyful and very acceptable so I would like to sell you that okay great thank you thank you Dino for selling me and not gifting me <laughs> yeah. uh, great yeah, uh, I see your your hard work too. yeah <laughs> Great. Uh, yes. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, so I think uh, that's it's time to wrap up. Thank you for coming and joining in this for this session. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I didn't bore you to death. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really so nice. Much. Thank you. And so much. if you are on LinkedIn or Facebook, I would really appreciate if you would you know write something about how did you feel about this uh, entire webinar and all. It would just really help me to know if I did well or not, and or should I just pack my bags and go home. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. Maybe thank I will you. Share in my Instagram, maybe. <laughs> yes, please. Vero is comfortable uh, for you. Thank you so much. Take care. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.